Great day, everyone. Come and enlist yourselves as we resume Lesson 4, Data Management. This is your instructor, Sir Arves. Previously, we had discussed two topics. The first one was the basic statistical concepts, and the second one was the measures of central tendency. Today, we will discuss Measures of Dispersion, Lesson Coverage 3. Measures of dispersion or viability evaluate how spread out the data is. It concentrates on how scattered the data from highest to lowest value, and even the distance of each data entries to the mean. There are three basic measures of dispersion that we will be undertaking today, and these are the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. This is one example of a dispersion of a data. Remember that the mean is the average value of the distribution. The median is the centermost value of the data set. And the mode is the most frequent value in the data. This data set illustrates the huge number of scores are found to the right of the distribution and is referred to as negatively skewed. That means more scores are higher than the median. This implies that if the illustration is for the scores of the students in a particular quiz, then they are performing well. On the other hand, this figure illustrates a positively skewed type of data set meaning more scores are found lower than the median, an indication that the students are failing. This is another type of dispersion that shows balance between the left side of the median and the right side of the median. In fact, the median, the mode, and the mean are found at the same location. This is a normally distributed type of data set. The normal distribution comes in different shape. We have a wider one and even a narrow one. A normal distribution can easily show us how dispersed or scattered the data set is. The wider Normal distribution indicates that the data set is more dispersed than the other, and the narrow normal distribution indicates that the data set is less dispersed. Let us study the normal distribution. As I mentioned earlier, the mean, the median, and the mode is found in the same location. So how do we study the measure of dispersion? Let us unlock them one by one. Let us start with the range. The range is the most basic among the measures of dispersion. All you have to do is to subtract the lowest score from the highest score. That is, R is equal to highest score minus the lowest score. Variance is the average squared distance of each score to the mean. It has the formula of S squared is equal to the sum of the square of X minus X bar all over N minus 1, wherein X are the scores x bar is the mean, n 
is the total number of scores. Once the variance is obtained, all you have to do is to get the root of the variance. That root will be the value of the standard deviation. Again, for the range, all you have to do is to get the distance between these scores, the lowest and the highest. That is, highest score minus the lowest score. Variance and standard deviation, on the other hand, is simply getting the distance of each scores to the mean. For the variance, that is the squared distance, and the standard deviation is just the distance. Looking back on the previous given, 20, 21, 21, 21, 22, 24, 25. Finding the range, you will have the formula R equals highest score minus the lowest score. The highest score is 25 and the lowest score is 20. Therefore, we will have 25 minus 20. And the range is 5. In finding the variance, of course, we need the mean. The mean for these scores is 22. Now, using the formula s squared is equal to the sum of the square of x minus x bar all over n minus 1, we will have 20 minus 22, quantity squared, plus 21 minus 22, quantity squared, plus 21 minus 22, quantity squared, plus and so on until 25 minus 22 quantity squared all over 7 minus 1 there are 7 scores that is why n is substituted by 7 afterwards we will obtain negative 2 quantity squared plus negative 1 quantity squared plus negative 1 quantity squared plus negative 1 quantity squared plus 0 quantity squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all over 6. And you will have 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 4 plus 9 all over 6. That is 20 over 6. Therefore, the variance is 3.33. In solving for the standard deviation, all we have to do is to get the root of the variance. The variance is 3.33. Therefore, extracting the root, you will have S equals 1.82 and that will be our standard deviation. Therefore, our answers are range is 5, variance is 3.33 and the standard deviation is 1.82. Let's do this activity. Find the range, variance, and standard deviation of the following data set. Data set A is negative 10, 0, 10, 20, 30. Data set B, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Let us first find the mean. For the mean of the first data set, we will get 10. For the mean of 
the second data set, we will get 10. But as you can see, the first data set is more dispersed than the second one. Therefore, we need to compute the measures of dispersion so that we can describe them individually. The range of the first data set is 40. The range of the second data set is 4. Based on the results, the first data set is 10 times wider than the second one. Now, for the variance, the variance of the first data set is 250. And the variance of the second data set is 2.5. Now, let us compute the standard deviation. All you have to do is to extract the root of the variance. The standard deviation of the first data set is 15.81. And the standard deviation of the second data set is 1.58. Based on the results, we can say that the first data set is wider than the second one. Now it's your turn. Find the range, the variance, and the standard deviation of the following data set. You may pause the video for you to answer. The answers are, the range is 31, the variance is 53.66 and the standard deviation is 7.33 did you get everything right great job there you have it the lesson coverage three measures of dispersion thank you for listening this is your instructor sir arves bye